and good afternoon good morning and good evening to people in other countries so i've received an email from our house in this email aka house have advised zoom of certain measures zoom can take to improve the system Uh, Aka House says Zoom uses a meeting ID number to identify the conference that participants are joining. Unfortunately, many individuals have realized that these numbers can be guessed and are get crashing into conferences to disrupt the meetings. So, well, this is bad for someone to guess a, um, a meeting ID and just type in and be able to enter and get crashing. Certainly, you don't want anyone to get crashing into your wedding or a meeting. Akaos goes on to advise Zoom that they should disable allow removed participants. Or well, certainly, yeah, if you are kicked out of a physical meeting, you shouldn't be expected to, to come back. So this should be disabled. Um, recently, I have completed a course in software testing, and I thought I could do some testing on Zoom which I've been working on today. So to do it, I'm going to join a meeting. And I'm going to provide a random nine-digit number as meeting ID. And I'll say join. So say this meeting ID is not valid. Please check and try again. And Zoom now presents me with a blank screen how about if i say if you cannot download the land but you join from the browser i'm going to do it from here so i don't want to sign in that's fantastic because i'm just going to join the meeting so i don't want to, to i don't want to join with video off join with video with video on join a meeting i'll try again this time I'll provide 10 edit. This meeting ID is not valid. Please check and try again. Okay, basically, uh, yesterday uh, I did try Zoom and I could find that I could, I could join in a meeting, but the system was asking for password, so I didn't really in the end join. But it, the system also allowed me to try the password numerous times. So if you had a system to to, to generate a password and try, I could have tried. I could have tried. And so I've gone ahead and done some other testing on Zoom, and the system seemed to be working pretty well. But there are some things that you need to improve on, which I'm going to lighten. So I created a meeting, and I also. In, uh, sent an invitee to one participant. So in creating the meeting, uh, Zoom required me to provide my date of birth, which I did. And then I had to go into the email to see a link, then activate the, my account. After activating, I was able to send a request for a meeting. Provision of the date of birth and other information is an industry standard, and Zoom can ask for as much information as I want from a person creating from a person creating creating a meeting zoom can zoom and ask as much info as possible this is okay this is okay Okay, guys, so it's absolutely okay for Zoom to ask as much information as possible for a person creating some of which I can keep if you want for marketing purposes. <clears throat> so the meeting um, invitee receives this link and it says, um, Blah Blah has invited you to join Zoom. Activate your account to start using Zoom with Frazier, the person who invited. So the person who invited clicked on this link. After, so in the, this link, there was no meeting ID provided this time, unlike before. 
So they click, they clicked on the ArcSearch account, and this was a screen that was presented for to them. Say so for verification, please confirm your date of birth. So this is where the problem. This is the problem we have now is Zoom. Invite a guest to provide their date of birth for verification. What verification? When they were invited, they didn't have to. And the person inviting them did not have to provide their date of birth. In fact, it will be legal for the person to provide their date of birth to invite someone to a platform which they don't know where the information has been save, um, saved. So this is the problem of court. Zoom should not be asking for verification to, for the, the invited person's date of birth. This should not happen. We recommend that, but overlooking um, a stunning Zoom, we have come to a following conclusion that Zoom is a project in making. It's still got a long way to go to meet these key standards. We recommend that critical security meetings should not take place in Zoom at all. This includes government meetings. They should not be conducted over Zoom. A uh, business business meeting in, in, in involving uh, sensitive information should not be conducted through Zoom. There are other platforms which offer the, um, encrypted videos, safe to one which have existed, including WhatsApp is much safer than uh, Zoom. Or just use a mobile, do the telephone to have a conference meeting. So unless you don't care about the information you're sharing or in a meeting, then you can use Zoom. But Zoom should not be used for crash course meetings. The infrastructure is still a project in making. There are lots of vulnerabilities people found in Zoom, and we have also found some vulnerabilities, but some appear to have been fixed over the last 24 hours. Like Zoom does not seem to be requiring. Uh, meeting IDs anymore. Okay, guys, hope you like my analysis of Zoom. If you do, please like my my video and subscribe to my channel. If you do not like it, please feel free to comment. Remember, you need to be positive. Sorry, you need to be respectful in your comment. Uh, bullying should not be tolerated with them. Um, offline or online. Thank you.